In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. I'm offering Mass this morning for the repose of the souls of deceased members of the Gonsalves and de Souza families. And we pray also this morning for the repose of the soul of Teresa Walker, who died during the week. Teresa and her husband Jim uh, were uh, regulars at this Mass. My brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Mother, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honour you with all our mind, and love every one in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Let us kneel before the God who made us, 
for he is our Lord. And we, the people who belong to this pasture, the flock, and his led by his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massah in the desert, when your fathers put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. A reading from the letter of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I would like to see you free from all worry. An unmarried man can devote himself to the Lord's affairs. All he need worry about is pleasing the Lord. But a married man has to bother about the world's affairs and devote himself to pleasing his wife. He is taught two ways. In the same way, an unmarried woman, like a young girl, can devote herself to the Lord's affairs. All she need worry about is being holy in the body and spirit. The married woman, on the other hand, has to worry about the world's affairs and devote herself to pleasing her husband. I say this only to help you, not to put a halter round your necks, but simply to make sure that everything is as it should be and that you give your undivided attention to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom to new children. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Amen. Jesus and his followers went as far as Capernaum, and as soon as the Sabbath came, Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. And his teaching made a deep impression on them, because, unlike the scribes, he taught them with authority. In their synagogue just then, there was a man possessed by an unclean spirit, and it shouted, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus said sharply, Be quiet, come out of him. And the unclean spirit threw the man into convulsions, and with a loud cry went out of him. The people were so astonished that they started asking each other what it all meant. Here is a teaching that is new, they said, and with authority behind it. He gives orders even to unclean spirits, and they obey him. His reputation rapidly spread everywhere, through all the surrounding Galilee and countryside. The Gospel of the In today's Gospel, Jesus' reputation spreads throughout the Galilee countryside because of his authority. Because he is different to the other preachers that people uh, flock to listen to. Because he teaches with authority. In the first reading today, we heard one of the earliest prophecies of the coming of Christ. When Moses tells the people in the desert, 
your God will raise up for you a prophet like myself from among yourselves, from your own brothers. To him you must listen. There are two places in the Gospels where we are told to listen to whatever Jesus tells us. At his baptism and at the transfiguration, the voice of the Father comes from heaven and says, This is my Son. Do whatever he tells you. There's also another place in the Gospel where his mother, our Blessed Lady, tells us to do the same. Do whatever he tells you. In the modern world, there seems to be a fear of authority. There is a dislike of authority. Everybody believing that they know better than those in authority to us. And in recent years, it has been proved that sometimes that is true, that those who are in authority are wrong, and that the people do know better than them. So how do we know that what we hear is a teaching of authority? How do we know that when someone teaches us something that that is what we should do? The answer is simply that authority comes from the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is God made man. Jesus is the Word made flesh. And that is why he teaches with authority. That is why we should do whatever he tells us. Because when Jesus speaks to us, it is God speaking to us. When we hear what Jesus says to us, we are hearing the very voice of God. And so he teaches with authority. And it's not just in the Gospels that we hear Jesus speaking to us. Jesus speaks to us in the whole of sacred scripture. Because the Bible is the word of God. And if Jesus is the word of God made flesh, all of sacred scripture is Jesus speaking to us. So when we read our Bibles, when we read Scripture, we are reading the Word of God. We are reading Jesus' words to us. When we hear sacred Scripture spoken to us, when we hear the Bible read to us, we are hearing the Word of God. We are hearing Jesus speak to us. Jesus teaches with authority, and so we should do whatever he tells us. Nobody, no one whatsoever knows better than Jesus, and so we listen to him. We hear him speak with authority, and we do whatever he tells us. So now let us stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God. Thank you. 
sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the, the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts. of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the default, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mm -hmm. 
the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the same is command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, For those who are joining us from home, we make an act of spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the next. First of all, um, we are uh, at the time of year when we have a lot of funerals. Our funerals aren't really um, affected by the pandemic. We don't have uh, more funerals than we would normally have this time of year. But this time of year, every year, we always have a lot of funerals. Um, however, the effect the pandemic does have on that is that normally, uh, when a popular and much loved uh, member of the parish community dies, Everybody likes to come to the funeral. However, uh, it is now against the law to have more than 30 people at a funeral. So we are advertising the funerals in the newsletter in the way that we normally do. But we do have to ask that no one comes to a funeral without the permission of the family. So the family will make sure that only 30 people will come to the funeral. But if you haven't asked the family's permission and you come to church, we will have to send you home because we won't know how many people the family is bringing. It's very difficult for us to have to say that. Uh, we are losing a lot of, of popular and much loved members of our community. Uh, but sadly, uh, we cannot just allow people to come to funerals anymore. Uh, you can only come with the permission of the family. Stewards are now a very familiar sight in our, in our churches. Our stewards do an amazing job of keeping everybody safe, making sure that people can safely come to Mass 
every Sunday and they are absolutely amazing. It is thanks to our stewards that the government changed their minds and have allowed churches to remain open during the current lockdown. However, it's not too late to become a steward. If the, uh, to be a steward, you need to be over the age of 18 and below the age of 70 uh, and, uh, and be, you know, uh, be, uh, have flexible availability uh, because I will, we will just put you on a rotor. So if you're interested in becoming a steward, uh, then send me an email uh, to the parish email address. As you may know, we have given over our hall here at Holy Trinity uh, to the NHS for vaccinations. Uh, and they are also always looking for uh, sort of volunteers uh, to help them uh, marshalling with the thousands of people uh, that come uh, in and out of the hall for their vaccinations each week. Uh, that's absolutely nothing to do with us, it is the NHS, but if you look in the newsletter, uh, you'll see the contact details if you would like to help uh, in that way. Um, Parliament is currently looking into uh, whether or not a child in the womb can feel pain. Uh, those who advocate for abortion uh, claim that they are unable to feel pain and therefore there's nothing wrong uh, with, uh, with abortion. Uh, but the government are uh, looking into it. So we are asking um, Catholics, as we believe that the child in the womb can feel pain, and that is one of the many reasons why abortion is wrong, uh, to uh, uh, ask our MPs to make sure they join in with that discussion and fight for uh, the fact that, that the unborn child can feel pain. There's a very easy uh, internet tool to be able to do that. I did it myself last night. It literally takes about one minute uh, to, to be able to do it. The link is in the newsletter on the parish website. Uh, masses this week. Uh, hopefully Father Rick announced last week that we are suspending weekday masses. Uh, the reason for this is simply uh, that as you know, uh, the virus during this winter is working harder than ever before. Uh, it is spreading much faster, um, and so the, uh, we need to do everything we can to keep everybody safe, and the best way to keep yourself safe is to stay at home. So we felt it would be irresponsible for us uh, to encourage people to leave their homes by having masses that simply aren't necessary. So we took the decision to suspend weekday masses. Uh, however, there are, uh, during this time, big feast days that we would like to celebrate together. So there will be public masses on those days, but all other masses will be online only. So this week, uh, we celebrate the presentation of the Lord, Candlemas, on Tuesday. So there is Mass at St. Basil's at 9.30 on Tuesday morning. Uh, there is also Mass here at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning, and all Sunday Masses will continue uh, as normal. Finally, there are a few First Holy Communion families with us this morning. Uh, some amazing children receive, preparing to receive their First Holy Communion later in the year. Uh, so if you have watched the video together and you've completed the worksheets and brought those with you today, then as the stewards invite people to leave the church, remain in your places and I will come and see you and I'll talk to you about the video, ask you what your favourite parts of the video were, um, what you've learned from watching the video and then I will sign your mass attendance sheet. If you have not seen the video, please uh, do not stay behind. Go, go home and uh, a book a place at another mass once you have seen the video. So, have a wonderful Sunday. Oh no, uh, uh, Patrick is waving the card machine at me. Uh, so, if you would like to make a donation to the parish by card, uh, then see Patrick as you leave the church. Have a wonderful Sunday and a fabulous week, and I will see you again very soon. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you.
May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Amen.